Then when we take a look at Juniper, so Juniper is more like that younger brother that does things a little bit different from the bigger brother in order to stand out. So with Juniper, they're more specialized and they have their use cases. So they're more geared towards high performance and speed. Then also you look at Cisco, they're mainly enterprise networking where Juniper is more seen on the service provider side. So a lot of your ISPs, a lot of them may utilize Juniper equipment. Not saying that they won't use Cisco equipment either, but a lot of times that Juniper equipment, their market share or the people they're trying to target is mainly the ISPs, those in the those that has a need for that high speed specialized networking equipment. So in taking a look at some of the Juniper certifications, they have the following certification tracks. They have an automation and dev ops, a cloud track, a design track. They have a missed AI track, and then they also have a security track. And then they have a service provider routing and switching track. And then they also have what's called their enterprise routing and switching track. So this enterprise routing and switching track is the one that I'm kind of going to hone in on today because this enterprise routing and switching track is the one that aligns closely to the Cisco networking tracks that we have available where we got the CCNA at the associate level. And then we have the CCMP at the professional level, then the CCIE at the expert level. So with Juniper certifications, they have at the associate level, they have a JNCIA-JUNOS. At the specialist level, they have a JNCIS-ENT. At the professional level, they have a JNCIP-ENT. And then at the expert level, they have a JNCIE-ENT. For those of us who have mainly dealt with Cisco networking certifications, I went out and I did some research just to find the equivalent Juno certification that aligns to the Cisco certification. So when we look at the Cisco CCNA certification on the Juno side, that aligns with the JNCIA-Junos plus the JNCIS-ENT. So you may see that this is two certifications that align to the CCNA. But if you remember a while back, the CCNA certification used to be two parts. So I remember when I took it, I, I took two tests. I had the option where I could take one test for the CCNA or I could break it up to ICND1 and ICND2. And then once I completed those two certifications, I then had the CCNA certification. So when I passed the first certification, I didn't have the CCNA certification. I had, I think it was their uh, entry level cert at, the, at that time. I forget the name of it, but it was a lower level cert. Uh, before the CCST came into place. So it's the one that the CCST took its place. So when I passed ICND1, that was the certification I had. Then uh, maybe a month, uh, couple months later, I went into ICND2 and passed it. Once I passed those two, then I then had the CCNA certification. So when we look at the Junos certifications that aligns to the CCNA, it kind of reminds me of ICND-1 and ICND-2 with the JNCIA Junos and the JNCIS-ENT. And then when we move on to the CCMP Enterprise Certification, that aligns to the JNCIP-ENT, which uh, here, if you're a someone that deals a lot with Juniper, this may be, I'm not going to say it's an easier route because I haven't looked into what's on their certifications. But one thing I know, once you know networking, networking is networking. The only thing changes from that is learning that particular vendor's equipment, learning how the vendor has things structured. But here, as you all may know, and I know it just because I'm studying for the CCMP, and let me just tell you again, it, it is a beast. But from that CCMP for on the Cisco side of things, you have to pass two tests. You have to pass the Encore and then you have to pass a specialization test in order to become CC, CCMP certified. So with the JNCIP-ENT, it only consists of one exam from what I could research, from, from what my research showed me. So that could be something that Angle says a little easier, but a lot of times it's a lot less stressful if you're taking one test to get a certification rather than having to take two tests to get that certification. And then moving on to the expert side. So for the expert side, Cisco has the CCIE Enterprise. So that certification is one of the highest standards you can get. So they have it for CCIE. They have them for the networking track. They have it for the security track. They have it for a lot of other tracks. So on the Juniper side of things, that CCIE Enterprise certification aligns to the JNCIE-ENT certification. And then 
Juniper has went an extra step for those of us that are Cisco certified that may be looking into some Juniper certifications because I think it's kind of smart too because if my competitor, I knew that my competitor owned a large share of the market. If I had certifications out, I'm going to figure out a way to make it convenient for someone who has that certification from the person that holds the higher market, find a way to make it convenient for them to go in and get my certification. So, and that's right, right along the lines what Juniper has done. So when browsing their website, I found a free seven hour video training series that's intended to help individuals with experience using Cisco devices running iOS prepare for the JNCIA-Juno certification. So this t training was designed to help those network engineers who may have a CCNA or they may have that knowledge. It helps them out to learn the Juno's architecture and the CLI fundamentals covered on the Juno's associate exam, the JNCIA-Juno's. And also I'll put a link to this in the description in case some of my fellow network engineers or some of my networking folks is looking at this video. This may be something you want to you want to pursue, you know, this could make you a little bit more, more versatile when it comes for different jobs and different things that you may be applying for. But I do think that doing this was pretty neat because like I said earlier, once you know networking, that networking doesn't change. Once you understand how networks works, how network fundamentals, things like that, that ain't going to change no matter who's teaching it. You know, that ain't going to change nowhere. But what you do need to learn is the different vendors, how they have things structured. So just looking at some of the Juno stuff, I can tell that from just look, doing research and seeing what people are saying about Juno, Juniper, I can tell that their CLI, a lot of people like the way their CLI is structured. I know from reading, I saw where they had a commit command where with Cisco, you know, is when you put in that command and you hit enter, buddy, it's taking effect. So with Juniper, it seems like they have a commit and also the, with that commit, they have another feature that checks and make sure that whatever you're putting in is not going to ruin anything, which I think is a neat fail safe feature because, you know, it, it's been plenty of times where I know even myself, when I was in the field and doing networking, there's plenty of times I would put in a command and that command would lock up the whole switch. So it's like, OK, so now you got a way to kind of check yourself, almost like when you do a Windows update or when you download an application on windows and it tells you that in order for this to take effect you got to do this you got to reboot or something like that so it's almost like that that second feature to let you know say hey do you really want to do this now or do you know that this is going to happen or hey we ran and checked this and we see these errors that may happen if you commit to this command so which i think that is a pretty nice feature